Hi everyone, welcome back to BIM Geek. Today I've got a quick tutorial on how to create Revit rooms from CAD drawings using Rhino inside Revit. So what is happening in the industry is that the CAD drawings are already generated and we are BIMifying them. This is actually a really common practice. And there is actually a great potential for automation because the information is already being created in the CAD environment. So we need to simply transfer that information from CAD environment to BIM environment. Let me briefly introduce you to the CAD file we're going to use in this video. So this is actually a floor plan that I created for another tutorial, floor finishes by room. I'll add link to that as well. So what I did is I simply added a couple CAD blocks that contains room information, such as the name of the room, the number, the, and the finish values, such as the wall finish, floor finish, and ceiling finish, etc. And we are going to use this information as a base for our Revit rooms. One important note, though, uh, your CAD drawing and your Revit file should have the same origin. This way, uh, when you open this file in Rhino, it's going to come in the correct location. Let's continue with the requirements. I'm going to be using Rhino Inside Revit version 1.7.8. This is a daily build. Let me show you what it looks like in Revit. So daily build is basically the latest release of Rhino Inside Revit before making into a final production, final release. And if you want to download that, simply go to Rhino Inside tab in Revit and then click on more and options. In here, click on updates and change your channel from public releases to daily builds. Once you do that, you'll have a download button around somewhere here and download the latest Rhino Inside Revit installer and install it. The reason why we're doing this is because the latest Grasshopper release have some amazing uh, topology related notes such as the add room, add room separation, you know, special element boundary and geometry, as well as some view related stuff. But in this tutorial, we are going to use the add room node. Other than Rhino inside Revit, you also need Allofront. In this case, I'm going to be using version 4.2.2. We are using that to reference geometry by its layer, as well as to deconstruct uh, some of the CAD blocks and access specific information about it. All right, so I'm gonna open AutoCAD again. And from this drawing, I actually only need the CAD blocks. So I'm gonna select one of them and using select similar, now all the room tags are selected. And then using right block command, I'm going to export the selected objects from here and overwrite the fp underscore rm dwg file. And let's export the selected objects from this drawing. I'm going to come back to Revit. Let me close Grasshopper. And I'm going to go to insert, link CAD, and link that. Uh, isolated room tags file into Revit. And yeah, because my CAD file and Revit file are sharing the same coordinate system, they are coming in the correct location. So I'm going to come back to Rhino Insight and open Rhino. And I'm going to open the same file in Rhino 2. And yes, so here it is. So there are actually a couple ways we can reference these CAD blocks in Grasshopper. One way is we can reference them by their block type. And the other one is by their layer name. So if I select all of the blocks in the drawing, as you can see, they all share the same layer. In this case, it's room text layer. And I am going to do that. Actually, I'm going to reference geometry by their layer. And as I said, we are going to use Elefront to reference geometry and reference by layer. Okay, so I'm going to connect a value list to the layer name input. This will generate a drop down menu containing all the layer names, and I'm going to select room text layer. So all the geometry that is in the room text layer are now referenced here. 
and we only have 13 blocks. Okay, so the location of these blocks will be my room location too. So I need to somehow deconstruct these blocks to get their plane. How do we do that? We're gonna go to block and deconstruct block. I'm gonna connect the geometry output as the block input. And yeah, so I have the block names as well as the block planes. So these planes actually are the location points for my Revit rooms. So right now they are Rhino planes. I'm gonna deconstruct these planes to get their origin point. So let's type in plane deconstruct to get the origin point. So this point is actually where my Revit rooms will be. So how do we add rooms using this point? Simply type in add room. So as you can see, this one expects two inputs, the location and the level. So what is our level? Let's come back to Revit. As you can see, we are dealing with level one. I'm gonna open Grasshopper again. And let's add a levels picker. Levels picker and select level one. And the location point for these rooms will be the origin of our plane. Let's connect this and voila. Just like that, rooms are created in Revit. But right now their names are rooms and their numbers are, you know, generic numbers. We need to specify the exact name and number and the parameters. So what are the parameters? We have WO3 for wall finish and FO3 for floor finish and CO1 for ceiling finish. And then I have the room number as well as the name of the space. So let me open Rhino again and let's see what that looks like in the CAD file. So I'm going to select one of the blocks and go to its attributes. So as you can see, it has the exact same attributes in the CAD block as well, such as the room name for the room's name. And then I have the number for the number parameter. I have the floor for floor finish, ceiling for ceiling finish parameter, and wall for wall finish parameter. So we have already referenced the blocks in the reference by layer node. So I need to get the user attributes from these blocks with their keys. Let's do that. I'm gonna type in get user value. So the geometry will be my blocks and the keys that we are looking for is First, we are going to reference the room name. Let's do that. I'm going to type in room name. Connect this as the key input. And in return, I'll get all the room names. Okay, so let's get all the keys in a single panel. I'm going to double click on this panel and let's type in number. Then wall finish floor finish and ceiling finish. I'm going to right click on this panel and activate multi-line data. Let's connect a panel to the values. All right, so for each block, I have its name, its number, wall finish, floor finish and ceiling finish parameters. So they are contained in here and I already have referenced my Revit rooms. What do I need to do now is simply set the corresponding parameter with its value. Let's do that. What do we use for that? The magical element parameter node. Element parameter. So this node basically allows us to get parameter value as well as set it. So the element input will be the rooms and the parameters we are looking for are first we need the name of the room and then the number of it and wall finish parameter floor finish and ceiling finish. 
I'm going to do the same thing and turn this into a multi-line data. By the way, just make sure that each of these have the same order. As you can see, this one has the name, number, wall, floors, fit, ceiling, and the Revit parameters are in the same order too. Okay, let's connect this as the parameters input. And in return, I'll get their values. So right now they are being set as room and 003, etc. But I want to set these values as the parameter values. How do we do that? Simply connect values as the input. And just like that, we have created as well as set the parameters of rooms from a CAD drawing. Let's check whether if it was correct or not. So this one is corridor, the number is 11, CO1, FO2, WO1. They are correct. I'm just going to select another one. So this one is dining, AO1, 11, ceiling finish, CO1, wall finish, WO2, and floor finish, FO3. Okay, it works. Thanks for watching. In this video, we have created a simple crosshopper script that transfers the room information from a CAD drawing into a Revit file. By the way, the Grasshopper script as well as the files that I have used in this tutorial, the CAD drawing and the Revit files, uh, they'll be available on my website. Link to that will be in the description down below. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one. Bye bye.